and welcome to Spring 2020 of Speaker Series. We're going to enjoy an internship panel. So, internships, why are they important? Well, a lot of people think that GPA is going to get you a job. Uh, kind of plays into it, but it doesn't really showcase your abilities. Internships do. They're working for people who have some type of experience. The GPA does not say that you know how to use a pipe net, that you know how to do uh, computations, or anything like that. But if you're at a company for three months, for the past two or three summers, it demonstrates to an employer that, you know what, we don't have to handhold this individual. They have some type of skills and abilities. So I'm not saying GPA is not important, but these internships are very important. So the STEM Center, um, we created a video on how to look for internships, how to apply for internships, um, and it's a webinar, 30 minutes, that has some very helpful tips, and we will, uh, it's on our STEM campus page, so you can have access to that as well. And also, two steps I have to plug is the Kenyatta Scholarship, we're encouraging everyone to apply. If you have a 2.0 or above, all majors, please apply. Um, the deadline is March 7th. So, to our panel. So we have four STEM students, different majors, kind of forget, who all you know participated in an in internship or two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them uh, get a name, their major, and where they go to transfer. And if this is your last semester, because I don't know, someone has a few more years. I mean, you can read it, but you're not going to do it. Hello, everyone. My name is Karina. I am a civil engineering major. Um, I am class of 2020. This is my last semester. And uh, so, where do you plan to transfer to? Where do I plan to transfer to? Where do you hope to transfer to? Um, I would like to go to SJC. Okay, go start. Hi, my name is Don Terrio. I'm a chemical engineer major. This is also my last semester here, so I graduated after this semester and I plan to transfer to either Cal Poly or SJC. All right. Well, you guys can clap too. Hi guys, uh, my name is Carlos. This is also my last semester. Um, transferring fall 2020. Um, I'm hoping to transfer to Cal Poly or uh, uh, UC Davis. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica. I'm a class of 2020, so this is my last semester. I hope to transfer. I applied to four UCs because I get it for free. But I hope to transfer to Berkeley or Davis um, or States. So we got two mechanical engineers, uh, civil, and bio. Okay, all right. So this is our panel, and you know the reason why we're using Kenyatta students who are currently here, they got the experience. They're still still here, and you can actually you know talk to them and ask them questions. And say, well, how did you do it? You know, what do I need to know? And we're going to you know, talk about some of that this evening. So, the next question is Karina. Well, this one has, how many internships have you participated in this year? I participated in uh, Spires in two different years. Some are Spires in two different years, and Winter Spires. So, the Spires is sort of it's broken down into three tiers. The first tier is Winter Aspires, um, which is a two-week program during the winter. And it's basically pre preparation for you to conduct research and uh, present to an audience. And the second tier is the summer, the summer um, portion of it, which is two months. And you're given a project and you have to um, conduct research throughout and present your findings um, in front of, of an audience as well. And then the third tier is also presenting at a conference 
I also presented at the conference. Okay, so we'll get to that. So the question, uh, how many internships have you participated in since we entered out of college? So my, my answer is technically two, but it's, it's, the, it's the same program. So um, I was a part of NCAS, which is NASA's Community College Aerospace Scholars. And it's a six week online course where you perform like a series of quizzes and then um, you have like a final project and then based on how you do on that final project with your quizzes with respect to the other people in the program, they ask you to come to an on-site experience at NASA. And I was invited to the on-site experience and after my on-site experience, um, while I was there, I was able to like build a relationship with the people who like ran the program. So they invited me back for the next on-site experience to be a you paid know, student assistant. So kind of like I basically did their job. So, yeah. Um, so I've technically done three. Um, actually, I'll mention that then. Uh, the winter aspires, which was the two week one, um, and then the summer aspires as well, and also the NCOS. I actually was able to go to uh, Louisiana, and from there we were driving to Mississippi, the John C. Stennis uh, Space Center, um, where they test uh, rocket engines, so that was pretty cool. I participated in three as well. My first one was um, like a it's SSCCPP, which is like Stanford Summer Community College pre-medical program. It's very long, but it's aimed for community college who are interested in going to medical school. Just it's more of an in-campus living community that you learn about like the courses that you like how it is to be a medical student, but before you even enter that field. Um, and I think as a minority you get that community and that help that makes you want to go into the medical field. Um, being that economic can be like part of the reason that people may not want to go to that. Um, so I think it really gave me like a security and then more of a safe way to say like, yes, I want to pursue this and I want to go with the major I want. Um, my second internship was with um, a pathology department at Stanford, which is in collaboration with Kenyatta College, so it's a research internship. Um, they're still open, so if you're interested, you can email Dr. Staples, he's the microbiology and cell biology professor. Um, we're doing research there now. Um, I've been there for like a year. And within the academic school, there's also, I also have the NCAS. I wasn't invited to the six week, I wasn't invited to the in-person visit experience. If you want to learn from what to do and what not to do, you should <laughs> come talk to me. Uh, but yeah, and in that point, I believe the pre-medical one is due March 1st, so you guys are still available to apply to that. And Dr. Staples is also on campus, you can reach out to him if you're interested. So now the next question. Um, what we'd like to know is we'd like to get a little more depth about your uh, so, next question. You want to know, uh, you know, how much you your favorite internship? You know, where was it, and what was the project? What did you enjoy about it? So, I, I liked all of them. I liked the, the, all the three, the four uh, internships that I. Um, I really, I really enjoyed that to be um, winter aspires. I I researched uh, cell field materials, and I, I thought that was very very interesting. Also, um, in the two summer aspires that I did, I conducted simulations under earthquake conditions and. One of them, I conducted simulations under wind loads as well. Um, and it was very, I feel like it, it, it exposes you to, to what you're gonna be doing in the, in the future. And it really, it really helps you understand what you're gonna be doing possibly for the rest of your life. And that's probably my favorite part of it. I like, 
I like both of mine as well. Um, the first part was the student experience, which I really enjoyed because I was able to. So the way they broke it down it was kind of like set up to where it was like kind of like you start your own startup company essentially, and the whole um, objective was to design a rover, a uh, um, uh, Mars rover, so like operate on like Mars-like terrain. So you had to like perform a series of like tasks, like go collect mineral samples or like um, collect rocks or debris from Mars and bring it back to base. And then the second part when I went as a student assistant was kind of like the outside looking in. So it was kind of, the first part you don't really see all the creativity or everything like going on because you're just like so stressed because you're like on a time schedule. But then when I went back as a student assistant and I wasn't under that stress, I was able to like see the whole process unfold, like from being stressed to like concept or idea to the design process to like making adjustments. So um, I actually really enjoyed the NCOS one as well, um, especially because I got to travel. Um, and we were, we were doing the same thing, the Mars Rover competition. And that was fun because it's like just a whole bunch of troubleshooting and you're trying to manage your time, you're trying to manage the budget that you're given, um, as well as uh, considering the design of the rover. Um, and then I really liked uh, Summer Aspires, what I really liked about Summer Aspires was the practicality of it. Um, the Summer Aspires was located in San Francisco State University. So, I, would, um, I and I was also taking linear algebra over the summer at Skyline. So, I was able to just drive up to 80, go to my linear class in the morning, and then come to uh, the internship. So, that was pretty cool. And they were super lenient with the time. Um, I was actually in the same group with Korea, and yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, I was actually, I'm actually a chemical engineering major, but I was placed inside the civil engineering group. Um, but it was still pretty cool to see like what kind of programs civil engineers are using. Um, yeah. I also enjoyed all of mine, but just to be like clear, you may have an experience that you may not like, and it's that's okay. I also like I liked my three internships, but I also there were some down moments, and I think at the end it's the accomplishments and like this the track of accomplishment and skills that you earn that is like crucial for employees to look at. So at the end, to me, just looking at that growth, it was at the end all good. <laughs> um, but for my first one, like I said, it sort of gave me like the idea that I do want to pursue medicine and I do want to go to this route. And for research, it was more of like hands-on experience of how I can, type, how can I like um, contribute to human health in a different way. And my research was well, still focusing on how like non nutritive sweeteners like Splenda and um, like sports drink, how can that affect our gut bacteria? How does that alter our health? Uh, our results show that it good um, that sweetener actually depletes the growth of the good bacteria, which can be detrimental to human health. But more research needs to continue. Um, and with that, I think for the NCAS NASA one, I got more of like a critical thinking out of that. So how can I apply my microbial research to do research in another planet? How can that go about? So I think I learned a lot in all of them. So, I have a question for Carlos. So, you mentioned that you're a mechanical engineer, yeah. and then you did an internship for civil engineering. Mm -hmm. um, did, did that have an impact on, you know, eventually everyone's going to answer that question, but yeah. since you kind of did that, you know, cross major type of internship, you know, maybe you can suppress that. Yeah. Did that have an impact on maybe you saying, you know what? This is cool. I want to do this, and you know, because you know, when civil engineers, you know, they tend to work on structures, roads, and things like that. Mechanical engineers tend to do other things, you know, uh, mechanical stuff, robots, cars, um, rovers, things like that. So it kind of that experience, like, hmm, let me rethink my major. Maybe I want to change, or yeah. I mean, um, 
I didn't really reconsider my major. I just, I think I came out of it appreciating civil engineering a little bit more. Um, honestly, at first I was kind of like bummed out because I wanted to be a mechanical, but um, there, there actually just wasn't a mechanical engineering troop that, that year. Um, so anyone who was, all, all of the interns that were uh, mechanical, they, they got placed in either electrical or uh, civil. Um, but I think I think it came out to be okay because I kind of I kind of learned to like step out of my comfort zone, and I know that's going to be um, extremely useful when I um, when I get into the field that I'm working because you need to be able to you need to know how you learn best. And in my case, I had to pick up this new program. We were working with SAP 2000. Um, which is the simulation program that Brandon was talking about. Um, and in that program, that program we just made like a 40 story building, which we um, then like put some accelerations coming in from a recorded, um, a recorded earthquake. I think it was the low of Um So that was pretty cool. So just learning how to learn new things that I'm not comfortable with. Uh, I think that was, was best. The best thing that came out of that, being a group that, um, that's not my major. All right, I'm going to ask Nicole a question. Um, you had mentioned that, you know, sometimes you have good times and, you know, bad times with internship. Um, I'm thinking of a specific example that I heard that kind of happened with you guys with the, you know, something died or something that's ever saw all over. Um, can you speak to how, I mean, that's something that actually happened in your river job? You know, I mean, what, what happened exactly? And, uh, you know, with the whole bad thing that we got? So a lot of us just going, like, general, like, each one, like, for research, there are days where I have to spend, like, extra hours to make sure, like, my bacteria didn't die. But at the end, you get to appreciate those bad moments, the best things are like, they are bad things, and you're like, oh, I wish I could just go home, or like, I wish I could just like, be something else. Like, for the pre-medical thing, it was like, you have to walk a mile to get to your class, even though like, Stanford's pretty big. <laughs> um, you have to wake up like at 6 a.m., and you're like from 8, like 7.30 to like 6 p.m., it's like a regular job, and you only get like one day break. It's like those moments where like, okay, there's some down time, like, down moments, but then at the end, you get to appreciate them. Um, so I guess this, this is a question for all of you. Uh, after your experience with the internships, has it discouraged you or encouraged you to continue with your major, um, the importance of what you're about to embark on, or is this like, you know what, this ain't for me, let me change? Let me get out. Has it had that type of impact for you to continue? Um, and also, too, why you guys have been some majors, it's rough, you know, taking, you know, you know some students might take the calculus one, or stats, and that's it. You guys got to take the calculus, three differentials, DFQ, a layer, and it's like, man, or this pain, why, you know? Has that internship, you know, kept you? Let's say in the fight, so to speak. Um, so I think specific, I think I felt it more with the the NCOS, or kind of, um, I was I was beating engineers that had worked in the field and uh, some that were retired, and then we we're also like getting tours and seeing these big huge structures where you're testing the engines. Um, and I actually met one of the engineers that was working. Um, the glass windows for the U.S. Um, the U.S. portion in the ISS. So I thought that was pretty cool. And just like What's kind of the, ISS? the International Space Station. Oh wow! So you were close one. Yeah. So so I got to meet one of those guys, and that was pretty cool. I found it kind of fascinating, and um, just like thinking like, like if this guy is in mechanical engineering, and that's what I'm working towards, I could possibly. <laughs> be working in something this cool and fascinating. Um, and I think that just kind of like 
it encourages my curiosity and it kind of changes like I can I can apply that to school and it just like it motivates me to to just want to learn and it um, it changes that mindset of of being scared into more um, being curious to learn. So that like that's that's kind of like what helped me get through all like the math classes and all the physics classes. Because um, I didn't start off like feeling like I could do it, but it was like through those internships and different programs um, that I've taken advantage here at Kenyatta that I, I became like more interested in the subject. So. Um, for me, it definitely kind of like reinforced um, my decision to be a STEM major. Like Carlos, I didn't start off with really thinking that I could go. I was a returning student. I came back um, after about maybe like six years of being like dropping out of high school. Um, I came back to school, started like the first math class that came out of offer. <laughs> And um, I kind of worked my way up, and like during that time, I kind of felt like every emotion. Like, it was days where I like, and everybody know that I like live in the Simpson. I put in hours and hours of studying. And, like sometimes you'll put in these hours of studying, and you don't feel like um, you retained as much information as you should have with respect to the amount of time you put in. It. And it can be frustrating and hurtful. Like and then you start to doubt yourself if you allow yourself to get too much in your head. And um, Man, I remember Physics 250, like, <laughs> the first midterm was highly disrespectful. <laughs> I went into the midterm, I was like, I'm good. I remember we wore our NASA shirts, like, I was charged up. I was like, oh, yeah, it's good. And, like, I like to flip through the midterm just to see what's all on there, what I'm about to get myself into. And I was like, dang, I don't know. Uh, the NASA logo on the shirt started to crease. <laughs> NASA was the furthest thing from my mind at that point. I was like, God, like at this point I'm hoping for a C. Like, um, it was hurtful. Like, I, I literally got super emotional. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just study up, just do my best. Cause I mean, in those moments, that's all you really can do. Um, know that you have way more information than you may give yourself credit. <laughs> Just try to like hold on the pillars, like okay, I know this and like, this is true, then this must be true, and then just kind of like work through it. But like going to NASA and like being around engineers who, like you said, we got to go on tours and like meet um, engineers working on different projects. Like I was able to meet the people who were working on the um, Astro B, which is the free floating robot that's on the International Space Station, um, and they're going to like replace the one that they have up there now with that robot and like just hearing what they're doing and how they're doing it and hearing that they struggle too made it a whole lot more real for me because it was like okay I'm not the only one struggling like I'm not stupid like I, like everybody struggled with this um, so it kind of like made me just stay motivated and just you know, stay consistent. I feel like Aspire's saved my career and my life. Um, as I can, I can relate to both of, of uh, my classmates actually here, <laughs> uh, to Carlos and Ontario. I, I definitely felt unmotivated before going into the internship. I remember going to Sandra and Rodriguez's office, she is the STEM counselor, and telling her I want to change my major. Like, I don't want to be here for this anymore. Cause I was really nervous as to where I was getting in, like what I was getting into, and I was doubting myself. And then she was trying to kind of calm me down and tell me, if she told me, um, you know, like just wait, do this internship, because I, I had already been accepted to the internship um, the first time around. And, um, she said, you know what, just do do this internship and then make a decision later after you've done it. And it was it was it was very worth it. Because I felt like um, 
just meeting all of these all of these people that were also doing the same thing that I wanted to do, and also so Aspires has um, with Aspires you have a a staff mem member um, advising your your project and also a, a student mentor and. Like they were very, very knowledgeable, and they got me very interested in what in what they had to work on. And the first time around, I, I worked with um, MATLAB and OpenSeas, which is a program created at UC Berkeley. And um, the second time around, I worked with um, SAP 200, 2000 with Carlos. And uh, the, the second time around, I was chosen to be the lead intern as well. So it was, it, it really opens up your doors once you do, it, do an internship. Even if it's the same internship, it's a different experience every time you do it. And I feel like it's very, it's very worth it. And you definitely get a, a feel for what you're, like I said before, like what you're going to be doing later on. And, and it, it teaches you whether or not you want that. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to know like what you want to get out of your education. Like many of you may want to take an interest to know that, and that's okay. Like, do that, take resources on campus. Because that's something that I didn't know. Like when I first started, I was like, that's my goal, what do I want to do? At first, I wanted to go with computer science and engineering because you make a lot of money after college. Um, but at the end, I think it was the interest and applying because I didn't have any skill sets. I just applied and put my story out there that I, and my motivation is more about, about your determination to use something and your eagerness to learn. Because for me, that sort of like put me to the biology aspect. What I'm doing now is microbiology, microbiome research related. And I've never taken a microbiology class, and I still haven't, and I'm, I'm about to transfer. But it's about like learning, putting yourself in internships that's going to give you a, an idea of the field that you want to go into. And that sort of motivated me, like that, what do I want to get out of my education? So it motivates me today of like, this is, I now have like a set goal of what I want to do, and I'm going to continue that. And, of, um, take advantage of the education I have now because a lot of scientists, it's, you take what you learn in your classroom and you apply it. And a lot of it I learned firsthand, but it's all about like, kept in mind, like I just took, like I took a year back, but it's all about like the basics. So know that and I know at first it might seem like, why am I taking this course? But it's just take, appreciate the course that you're learning and at the end it's all going to pay back and just know your goal and what you want to accomplish, and that should be. <laughs> and I think engine should solve for that. So. I'm totally right. Someone asked me ask this question. Ask this one. Um, so, from the internship, was there a, a, a surprise or something that you did not expect from the internship that was like very joyous? I know, like, with you guys, you guys. I don't know if you did both, but you went to DC yes. and Hawaii. Okay. Um, yeah, so something that was something to look. I've never, like from my country, I've never went anywhere else in like, the US, but something that came with the research was conferences. Um, and that was paid for. And you can also apply for conferences if they have like a travel um, scholarships to apply for. I got the travel scholarship. Um, and my base of the research that I did I got to go to Hawaii for four days, so that was really nice. It's like a vacation, but you also get to present the research, so it was like a win-win for me. Um, there was also like a DC conference, so if you're interested in doing this internship, you also get to go to conferences in different areas. I didn't get to go there just because it was back to back, and my academics mattered, so I just, I already had a presentation to go to on sadness. So if you submit an abstract, then you either get accepted or not. Um, so I got accepted, so I have to go. And yeah, it was nice. <laughs> so who paid for that? Did you pay anything? Uh, I didn't pay anything. It was the travel scholarship that I, I obtained. And the other partners that I gathered, they 
I didn't know that you didn't have to see apply for the Java scholarship, but I heard that you get like a VIP something pass. I'm like, I want to get that. Um, but normally the research that you go, like the one that I'm in with Dr. Staples, they pay for the conferences. And, well, um, yeah, so her group got to go to DC and Hawaii. Yeah, they paid for it. Yeah, they paid for it. And then my partner, she's now in DC Merced. She got to go to DC. And when Dr. Staples was giving the presentation, I noticed that she met a lot of important politicians that may not be like who you may like. But I thought it was very, like, I, I was mind blown by like the picture that I saw. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. Like, that's so cool that you get to meet this in front of just take advantage of the trips. You don't know where you're going to get. Um, Who do you believe? Because not what you know. Who do you know? All right, thank you. So what about you, Carlos? Something else is like, oh, I didn't expect that. You were thinking, this will go to office, tourist votes, do some math equations, and you know, what really sounds call it a day. Yeah. Well, I, um, I think I was more, uh, like, going to Louisiana, that was kind of a surprise. Because you actually, uh, so how that end cost works, I'm sure was explaining it uh, a little earlier, but uh, it's like a five week online course, uh, and uh, you just like submit uh, tests like every single week, and then at the end of it, you have to uh, do like a final project. And then if you do well enough in this final project, then they invite you to one of the different, like, uh, sites that NASA has like throughout the country and it just so happened that the date that I was assigned originally was um, I was assigned to go somewhere in California um, but then that date didn't work out so they ended up sending me to Louisiana and that was kind of a surprise and I didn't have to pay for that either um, so that was pretty cool. Where in Louisiana? Uh, I don't remember but it was very close to Mississippi. John C. Stennis Space Center is located uh, in Mississippi, but we just drove in to the bus. So. I didn't expect for NASA to be so late back. Um, <laughs> like when I went there, I just I was like, dang, right now I'm about to have to like converse with these, you know, like some of the world's best engineers. And it's like it's me. College, like, you got people who've been doing this for 10, 20, 30 plus years. So um, I overthought it a lot, and I was just like, I don't know. Like, what if they bring up a really technical conversation, and I'm just sitting there and I can't add to it or anything? But when I got there, it was chill. Like, everybody wanted to. Um, it was like a very inclusive environment. Like, nobody kind of. Um, there was like no hierarchy. It wasn't like a superiority kind of thing. It was like. It was cool, and then like one of the things we um, we had to do was like we ate lunch on um, at their main cafeteria. I went to NASA Ames, by the way, in Sunday, um, Mommy. So we had to eat lunch at our their main cafeteria. And during lunch, we had to just go walk up to a random person and like introduce ourselves, tell them our major, and ask them about their job role and their job description. Um, I love to talk, I love to like start conversations with people I don't know because like people are very interested in hearing their stories like I love hearing people's stories. Uh, so it was kind of cool like I was, I was not expecting that. I was expecting them to just be like technical, 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 sleep, technical, technical, but it wasn't like that. It was pretty chill. Sure. Possibly something I didn't expect was so when I presented at, at um, CSULA um, at the conference, I wasn't expecting to get um, so much praise from professors when, I, when we were presenting, because I presented with my group. Um, so I was afraid that they would ask like super technical questions. And they mostly asked questions about us, about how our experience, about how how the research was conducted. And 
they also ask technical questions. I'm not gonna lie, but they. But one of the biggest takeaways that I got from that was that you know your project more than anybody else, and I felt like that was very, very surprising because I was in there with a lot of people with PhDs, some of the world's best professors, and it was intimidating. But it was that was the most surprising part of it. Excellent. So I have a question for the audience. <clears throat> Just to show you, how many guys have you know participated in an internship? Just one. Okay. Just one. Now, if you're not a student major, there's internships for you know everyone. You know, medical uh, psychology. There's internships for everyone. So you, know, you have to go out there and look for them. So now, since only one person has participated in an internship, I'm going to ask you guys why would you recommend everyone else in the audience to apply for internships? Why? Why it's important? How do you? What do you? How will it benefit them? So. It's the best experience you get. I feel like it's the it's it's the best experience you can get at Kenyatta overall, or in community college if you do an internship while you're here. Um, you you get to meet amazing people. You get to do a lot of research, and you get well some some of them do research, not all of them. But you learn a lot. You learn a lot about yourself as well, not just about what field you're going into. And you get paid for it. That's, I mean. <laughs> I would recommend it because the experience, the experience you get, um, and also because you will be uncomfortable. And when you're uncomfortable, that's when you grow the most. So like, um, mostly everything that I've done in relations to like the internship or just in general, whether it was conferences or whatever it is, it was me putting myself in a very uncomfortable position. And one, the hardest part is just putting yourself in that position once you're there gotta adapt. So like but once you adapt, regardless whether it go good, bad, or not as good as you thought it would have went or wanted it to go, you still come out with a learning experience and there's a lot of positive you can take away from it. So and it also help you like get used to working in group settings because almost everything we do, regardless I feel like of any major, will be working in teams. So I like study groups. Like if you're a very kind of solo kind of person where you like to do everything by yourself, like it don't hurt to just start off making study groups and kind of like getting out of your shell and getting used to working with other people because in most job and professional settings will be like a team effort. Um, I think it also looks good on your resume. Um, and it's like, I was just talking to Karina about this earlier when we were saying that uh, the probability of getting uh, getting accepted for an internship is directly proportional to the amount of internships that you've taken. <laughs> so, um, the more internships that you, you take, the more likely that you're going to be accepted. Um, and that's, that's good because you get to see if, if you actually enjoy the kind of the, the material, I guess. And you, you get to meet different people who like, are these the kind of people that I'm going to be working with. Um, and you can answer that for yourself. Um, so just like being exposed to the field, I think that's, that's uh, a good reason to do an internship. I think an internship itself just helps you grow pre-professionally and like 
someone who doesn't know, like I think what I got out of thinking trip was like networking. And where I am now like, is a first, when I was like first here, I didn't know anyone. Um, I didn't, well I took advantage of the resources, like the internship and like web page. But it was more about like, I didn't know who to reach out for connections. So I think in internships you get to network a lot about people in the field who you may want to talk more about if you want to get a job someday, or if you don't like it, they can reach out to someone else. So I think it's getting, it will help you grow. That's my take out of that. And don't be scared to apply, because I applied to, like Stanford sounds like a big name, I applied to the pre-medical program with like only one biology course. Like it's more about what you write, the motivation behind it. Also do good like academically, but there's resources around campus that help you condense your writing, like put your motivation like in there so they know what you are after. So don't be scared to apply. There's always like stipends um, with an interest. So now, um, about 10 minutes. So, questions from the audience? Any questions from the audience? Oh, we do that one. It was Bio 225. It was the biology of organism I just started. Um, I didn't have many and I felt like, oh, I may be rejected. I also applied to Dr. Staples without taking, with enrolling in bio to like 230. So uh, it's just it's being able to explain yourself and even email, contacting them. It's reaching out to the people and trying that you're motivated to be part of the program and what you're going to get out of it. There are resume writing workshops in the STEM Center. Um, I think they are held by uh, Gonzalo. Yeah, they, there are many workshops that you can go to. You can also get a hold of, um, of any tutors in the, in the Learning Center. And I think you can find also mentors that can point you out to these resources and on campus. And there are, um, yeah, there are a lot of programs that you can also also be a part of that will help you with your reason, with your with all of your resumes and your cover letters and um, any letter of recommendations. Also, too, something that can help you if you've never had internship and trying to get one. Also, some of your projects that you have worked on and the way that you do those projects out. Um, it's just like, for example, if you had to work with a team of five people and you guys were working on programming something, it's just like, talk about, you know, team dynamics. You know, what was the objective? Uh, what were some of the challenges? And the success. So if you have several projects that you worked on, what it helps employers see is that you have the ability to problem solve the process. You know, so that's what makes you a strong candidate for internships if you like, haven't had one yet. You know, like, some of them kind of went to you, like, you got to get an internship, you get an internship, or something like that. And, you know, you got to get one. Once you get one, then it's like, okay, you're in. Okay. Also, one thing I wanna, wanted to add was, um, don't be afraid. Like, if you, if you want that experience, just apply. Apply to all of them. Apply to the, the ones that you're interested in. More than one can say yes. Um, I mean, I really 
can't speak necessarily to the only thing I do know, the only stipulation that can be an issue for the National Student Strikes Internships um, is some requirement to be a US citizen. For example, like NASA, you know, they require that. And then depending on the project, they may be required to be a US citizen. But I mean that again, it's still sad. What kind of things you need to prepare to prepare for the internship? So, what classes? So, in the internship or? Yeah, like internship, like, for example, you want to work at the last one. That's great. Or something. Um, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say you need classes for it. Some may specify, like, oh, we want you to have, like, some understanding of, like, SolidWorks or math lab or something. But, um, I think the job description will kind of tell you, but I don't think I run into anyone that like specifically said it depends on the internship. I think the internship will, will let you know because some will say. So when I took my uh, first summer aspires, I it was kind of required for you to have taken engineering statics. I am taking engineering statics right now. So it, it's not about the classes that you've, take, that you've taken before, depending on the internship, of course, but it, it's more about you, how willing you are to learn about, about this internship and this project. I just wanted to add to you, so before I forget, um, there's an online tool that you can access through KenyattaCollege.edu if you go to the Career Center. There's a resume builder. So if you don't have like absolutely nothing for a resume, um, write down your projects, like you said, and um, so you could like say it was a project where you did like a, just as an example, like a computer science project, and then you can type in like computer science or software engineering, and it'll automatically generate like some bullet points that you can add to it. So you won't even have to like think about like, how do I put this into words, how do I describe it, and you can just go through it and like add what you want to have. Um, just to get like a kind of like a starter resume to kind of set up an appointment with like Gonzalo or like somebody in person or somebody in the space center. At least they have something to go off of. So like. So just to give you guys like a bit of a case, uh, like all of the interests I've taken, like it was more of like I learned how to do the job when I got the interest. Like, I, my coursework applied, like yeah, I understood it more, but I think it's more about taking, a, like I said, taking advantage of your education and what you got out of it. So if you don't have anything like to write about your resume, I think it's important to know like what you're good and what you accomplished. Like probably everyone has taken an English course or communication because it's required. Like use those and you put in papers. Papers is like crucial to doing like research writing and all of that. So how do you apply what you learn academically, like in your English courses and your communication to better communicate? How do you put those skills into something that they're wanting, like reading their uh, description of the program? So my advice is to read the description of the program, know what you want to get out of that, and know what skills you you think you already have, and just add that to it. So yeah, I mean, we're already paying for college, so take advantage and Take what you've learned and apply it. Any other questions? Sir, can I also add on to that? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, also, I've also gotten advice uh, when you're making your resume and you're trying to get a job or an internship at a specific place. Uh, it's a good idea, like she was saying, to do your research, check out their mission statement, and see what their goals are or like what kind of projects they're working on. Um, and look for the key words and then try to incorporate that in your own resume uh, when you're describing yourself. So. Also, you can teach yourself stuff too. So, like if you know you want to get like an internship working at a car dealership, like at Mercedes Benz, right? And then you look at, you can get on Glassdoor nowadays and then it'll tell you like the position, the job description, the preferred requirements, the um, the requirements that you have to have, and then just look at those requirements, and it's like, okay, well, I plan on start to apply for summer internships if they want experience with something particular. 
you can start to kind of familiarize yourself with that. Like they have YouTube, they have like a lot of online resources that you can um, that you can utilize. The STEM Center, like you, there's so many resources here. Just like tap in with like somebody that works here and tell them what your plan is, and they gonna like help you reach your goal. Just be like really proactive about it. Like and again, like they say, like we can't reiterate this enough. Like if you, even if you don't feel like you qualify still apply because that says a lot and a lot of times they will still accept you just because they know there's a certain type of motivation in you to see that you don't all the way qualify for it but still be ambitious enough to take that chance. So let's give our panelists a round of applause. And so you know I would highly encourage everyone to apply for leadership, especially if you're STEM. Um, apply for civil leaderships. That's what's going to make you a stronger candidate for you know, when you graduate. Um, also, too, when it comes to college selection, choose, I mean, you know, choose colleges that really push internships that, you know, help you get there, like Cal Poly Slow or Cal Poly Pomona. There are those campuses where it's like they're kind of requiring all their students to have an internship. They help you get internships so when you graduate, you know, you can just be ready to work. Also, when internships, you know, we heard like NASA and Stanford and people think of Google and Facebook. Look, you know what? Go to Joe Schmo's computer engineering small farm with three employees. You know, I'm pretty sure they're looking for someone young who's eager to help them carry the load of little small startups. All that matters is that you got that experience for some company. You just got to get your foot in the door. And don't be afraid to apply. It's like a movie. I mean, like internships and scholarships is the same thing. It's like a movie. It's like you always see these movies, and not even a movie, real life. Sometimes you see a woman. You know, beautiful, gorgeous, of course not beautiful and gorgeous, it's you know, relative. You know, you know, beautiful and gorgeous, and then you look, you see her boyfriend or her husband, and you just like, how did that happen? Well, chances are, he was the only dude who said something to her because everyone else is intimidated because she looks so good. So this is like the same thing with internships. It's just like, people look at the, the, the you know, requirements and like, oh man, I'm not going to same thing with scholarship. Well, no, they want this. No, I'm not going to drop the application. And then no one fills it out. And you'll be the one who gets that. So put it out there. You know, put it out there. Just go for it. Because if you don't, then it's just like, uh, you miss out on something. And for those of you who are in the medical field, those internships for a job is going to be more important than the GPA. I know a couple years ago, um, I got to participate in a med school day, and it was pretty interesting. And so, they had uh, San Francisco, uh, Harvard, like uh, USC, and UCLA, some of these top med schools in the room. And it was like, you know, our focus has changed as far as who we we're trying to select for medical school. They're like, back in the day, they used to find I mean, the candidates were chosen by GPAs. But what ended up happening is those candidates with the high GPAs, when it came to patients, they didn't treat the patients like people. They treated the patients like projects. So it was just like, does this hurt? Does that hurt? Well, if it doesn't heal you, if that doesn't heal you, oh well. Well, they want people who want to treat patients like people. They care about their well-being, not about any results. So, for those who want to do the medical field, you know, those internships yeah. will get you there, will get you closer. So, thank you for participating, or, you know, uh, yeah, participating this evening, and we hope to see you again next week. So, don't forget to sign out and take some of that food, too. We've got a tray full of vegetarian. There we go.